Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of the Roots of Africa program. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about our youth. The youth today have involved themselves in violent extremism, either to lack of job or just self-interest, peer pressure, and many more. Today we are going to have our youth director, Mr. Henry Lenga, and his group telling us more about the youth extremism. In the studio today, we have Mr. Ali Fujo from Haki Africa, who will tell us more about this topic. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hatchek Health International Development Organization, IDO Network. Yes, Mr. Ali Fujo. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Maybe you can tell us more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, my name is Ali Fujo. I'm um, a Kenyan and I'm a youth. Um, born and raised in Likoni, Mombasa. And I work for Haki Africa. Haki Africa is a non governmental organization based here in Mombasa that's a champion for issues of human rights. Our core agenda as a human rights organization, we are into uh, uh, fighting on issues of human rights. Whenever human rights violations occur, then we are there to make our intervention. So that's actually Ali Fujo, and uh, that's actually initially about uh, Aki Africa. So thank you, Anne, for this opportunity. And uh, I'm glad that today I've got this opportunity to be in front of cameras and to talk uh, about uh, issues of CVE, especially in the Horn of Africa. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I hope our viewers, you're going to stay tuned and learn more about it. Okay, Mr. Ali Fujo. Let's start by um, maybe explaining to our viewers what does CVE means. Yes. Uh, <laughs> This is a very simple two words, that's an English word. We all know about uh, violent, violent is clashes and sort of types. And uh, extremism is to like something to extreme, mostly. That's uh, what uh, violent extremism is. And uh, in this context, we are referring it to people who love something to, to extend they brought it into violence. That's actually is about violent extremism. So in our context as a human rights organization or a perspective of human rights organizations, actually people do love uh, different issues. For example, you can see a young or a young people like football, they are becoming fans of football to extreme, whereby they, they argue to extend that violent or card. So this is the issue we are talking about. But uh, in our context, actually we refer to religion. Yeah, in recent years, we have seen there are some clerics, especially Muslim clerics, who are preaching uh, radical things which get into young people. And uh, you know young people, most of them here in Mombasa, in East Africa, they are jobless. So that's desperation of looking for a job, it attracts them into a spiritual way 
and that they end up going to join uh, terrorist groups such as Al Shal Shabab, ISIS, and sort of. So uh, the radical preachers are using their religion to attract young people to go to for tourism uh, issues. So actually, it has happened for quite some times here in East Africa, and the country which have been affected most, I can say it's Kenya and Somalia itself, because uh, we are the farthest east of the Africa. So in Somalia, uh, actually, there is uh, this Al Shabaab terror group. So they demand young people across the Africa. And um, their clients mostly are from Kenya. And uh, most of them are from areas where domination of Islamic is most, e.g. Mombasa, uh, Malindi, Lamu, and uh, part of uh, Western Mumias, where there's a big domination of Muslims. So actually, they go there and they preach about uh, uh, jihad, and uh, this attract young people to go to Somalia. Most of them, there is a, that attitude that uh, it is issues of the faith. But to us, as uh, expertise of issues of CVE, we found it as a um, one way of them uh, gaining their income, sort of. Because uh, according to the analysis uh, and uh, the study that we, as an organization, we have uh, acquired from various uh, uh, platforms, is that Al Shabab is a company group that struggle uh, to get a profit out of it, and uh, to get uh, you know terrorist or a crime in the world is a big business. So they are using uh, Islamic faith to attract young people so that they gain out of a crime. So uh, basically, you can say the majority are Muslim, but do you also have some Christian or some other faith, maybe Hindu, getting into? Yeah, uh, <laughs> with Hindus is very rare, although uh, some Hindus are Muslim too. And uh, you know, the target are they from poor people. So you know, they are desperate. That desperado, I think it's the clue that they're using so that to gain their trust. And um, it's not only Muslim, you know, per se that uh, the perception that uh, uh, the coast people are, are dominating Islam most. So you are expecting names like Ali, Muhammad, Hafiz. But uh, recently we have uh, seen people converting from Christian to Muslim. And uh, most of them, their names appeared when, uh, whenever a uh, terrorist attack it has happened in our country. So I think it's affect across, it cut across. Uh, and there are those people whom uh, they approach because of their beliefs. And uh, there are those who uh, they have been attracted or approach because of their life status. So I think it acts the both uh, for those who have a big faith in them and for those who are desperate and uh, they want to make it in life. So it depends. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ali Fujo. Now, would like, maybe you can explain or expound on exactly how do you go about uh, first identifying the youth, identifying whether this, this kid is uh, in uh, the terror group or how do you go about it? Maybe to begin, uh, Madam Ann, uh, there are two perspective uh, 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 issues that are, are really affecting young people. One is crime itself. And now recently we have seen imagining of a, a young uh, juvenile criminal groups. And um, this it has affected to extent that uh, even the, the people who radicalize these young people are taking advantage of them. So it has really been an issue in, in Kenya. And um, as our work, how we identify these young people, actually in our organization, we have a, a rapid response uh, uh, department, which is look into. So in 2013, beginning of 2013 up to date, we have seen a lot of extrajudicial killings and uh, forceful uh, disappearance. So whenever an extrajudicial kill uh, has happened, uh, the family always come to Aki Africa uh, for them to get their, uh, their justice. So with us as an organization, I don't know, it's very hard to get justice in a short while, but uh, what we do, 
we collect evidence so that we give it to the authorities so that to see um, how uh, justice IAR has been prevailed. And um, other than that, we are calling, we are mobilizing young people through meetings, through forums, through uh, theatrical performances, whereby uh, we, we sensitize about these issues of crime and CVE. And um, like three years ago, Mombasa, uh, Mombasa County, it was the first county to come up with an action plan uh, for preventing and countering uh, violent extremism. The strategy, uh, the action plan, it's a strategy uh, that uh, it's guided us, a civil society organization, plus the government and uh, uh, government through its uh, department, especially uh, the Department of Security, to see on the uh, smooth approaches that uh, we are going to uh, disseminate information to prevent and counter violent extremism. Although the issues of extrajudicial killings and the forcible disappearance a per se that are conducted by our uh, local uh, security authorities, which is the hard approach. So with us civil society organization, we are doing the sort approach. The sort of approach is by educating the community on this issue so that uh, they can keep them away from these issues of uh, violent extremism plus uh, crime itself. So actually we we call for proposal, we, 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 we write proposal to donors, they fund us, and uh, the proposal we are calling for forums, meetings, legitimation fees, and uh, other things, so that to see uh, how we can apply soft approaches to deal with these issues. Okay, so basically you work with the community? Yes, and even with the government uh, authorities. Yeah, so we work, uh, we work hand in hand uh, with Office of County Commissioner, we work together with IPOA, we work together with uh, Anti-Terror Police Unity, so that to see how best we can, we can support the issues of such approach. Because uh, the hard approach uh, to us as a human rights organization, we see it increase the, the, the VE issues in the coastal. Because uh, for example, there is a case happened in uh, Okunda whereby um, an, a suspect was uh, followed at his home with his family and a wife uh, was pregnant and uh, in the countering uh, it happened that uh, the man was shot dead and um, two kids were shot dead and um, uh, a bullet penetrated into the womb of the mother who, whom she was uh, pregnant and killed the fetus in there. So I think these are the hard approaches that uh, uh, we don't want uh, them to exceed more because uh, we are seeing the person or the a person who is related to the family, what will be reaction? Is he going to take to narrate it or is he going to, to, to do revenge? So these are some of the issues that are uh, we want to counter this issue, these issues in a soft approaches. Okay, thank you very much. Our viewers, you've heard all about uh, Ali Fujo. And kindly, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get to know more about uh, what they are curbing and what they'll do to curb this issue. Thank you very much. Welcome to yet another episode of Learn Swahili via Movies. There are three words that we're going to be focusing on. Muda, which is time, Mungu, which is God, and Mapema, which is early or earlier. Because we both don't belong to this world. You are just like me, Benjamin. Your heart is just like mine. Well, Baba, no, no, star, I come to see you. You could come in, Mr. Kasi. Did you? Mimi na juwa kwa sababu mama ngo ayuko ndoma na mtaka buisi. Lakini mama ngo mimi angewa mzi ma. Nisike pata the keys. Nani anataka kuwa duniani? Nita utoa umzi utoa kitu chako. Doctor, you are pesa. I see the Sharia. Okay, fine. I'll marry you. Now let them be free. I'm serious about you. I want to marry. Someone is going to die.
na tunapata kufahamu kwamba hata wale ambao wanafanya recruitment ya vijana in talent extremism wamepungua kwa kina na si rahisi kwa mtu wa kawaida unless unatumia intelligence uh, processes ndio unaweza kutambua ni nini ambayo inafanyika kila dini kuna women desk sisi hufikia hizi women desk zote kwa sababu itikadi kali haina muislamu haina mkristo haina ambaye hana dini zamani tulikuwa tuna deal na itikadi kali kivyetu bila kuhusisha dini nyingine lakini tukakuta ni watoto wetu wote wanaopotea unakuta mtoto anageuka kwa muislamu lakini hajajua misingi ya dini ni nini ni rahisi sana yule mtoto kutekwa sasa tunakaa pamoja tunazungumza on the golden rules golden rules ni kama zile amri kumi ambazo dini zote zinafanya nini zinakubali welcome to yet another episode of the roots of africa for those who have been with us you've heard that we are talking about the youth in kenya and in our episode today we are talking about cve so today in the studio we have mr ali fujo and kindly would like to know uh, mr ali fujo you've said that uh, you have been using the community and the local authority to curb the issues of the terrorism attacks and uh, uh, and the kids there were young youth being induced into the terror attacks so let me ask you a question how how are you planning or what measures are you taking to be able to see that the youth not only from the youth but once they are a bit young because uh, as a kid you also have the mandate to know what is happening because by the time you become a youth at least you know this is wrong this is right so what approach are you using so that you can educate the community from being uh, from a young person to a youth even to an adult because even the adults some of them are being coerced to join the terror groups yes uh madam ann um for the last few years aki africa has been uh forefront in seeing that uh, we are preventing and countering these issues of ve and um, one of the aspects that uh, we are using as an organization uh, we want to install uh, some discipline, some natures to young people on seeing uh, issues of security as their priority. Um, it is very simple that um, in the absence of uh, peace, there is no development. So as an organization, we mentor young people on different uh, issues. For example, uh, and those are some of the uh, software approaches that uh, we are using. We are, target, we are going, actually what we do, we go to those uh, hotspot areas whereby we see issues of uh, VE and crime, uh, it's on high rate. So we go there and uh, we introduce some programs like football, like art, the things that our young people like to do more so like to watch or like to hear i know young people they get uh, uh, carried away with uh, funny funny things and entertainment so these are some of the things that uh, we instill to young people uh, so that uh, to shift their thinking uh, from issues of uh, crime and violent extremism to issues of uh, self-development so these are some of the aspects that our, our organizations uh, like Arca Africa is using uh, to young people. Okay, thank you. Recently you had a festival, a uh, CVE festival. Probably maybe you can tell us more about it and what you attained to achieve after the festival. Yeah, actually about the CVE festival, um, uh, it's activity that was organized uh, with uh, at least four uh, civil society group. That is Aki Africa, uh, Kwacha Africa, Manyata Youth Organization, and uh, our our donor was for Ramsiv. So the object object of uh, objective of that uh, specific event was to use art as a tool of countering and preventing uh, violent extremism. So that's why we call all actors and all stakeholders who are interested to in these issues of uh, preventing and countering violent extremism on that platform so that we can uh, make young people able to disseminate information about CVE in their local areas. Uh, that's why uh, we managed to approach uh, Raya TV, you yourself, to come there so that uh, 
uh, to see how producer and TV uh, owners can take this initiative of uh, uh, passing information about CVE in their context. You know, it's very hard for us and civil society organizations uh, to get a, a bigger crowd, a mega crowd. But with you people who own TV station, it's very easy. I know you have a lot of followers uh, uh, worldwide, so it is easier. That's why we, uh, and I, you know, young people like doing art. So we came to agree that uh, let us use art as a tool of disseminating this information. And uh, let us even uh, include other partners, uh, fourth estate uh, partners, which are you guys, so that uh, to see how best we can do together to see the preaching of uh, countering and preventing voting extremism uh, do uh, exist in our local content. That's the big objective that we, uh, we, we did that uh, CVE festival. And uh, we are glad that um, uh, other than getting stakeholders like you, even the government itself was there uh, to see, uh, to assist in seeing our objective are uh, meant. So we are glad that um, we even get uh, assistance from uh, the government authority and to other stakeholders, especially uh, with the fourth estate. Because um, I think and I believe uh, whenever something has been aired on a TV, it has it reaches to many, many, many people other than conducting a simple forum where it has struck to maybe if many people, then uh, 40 people but uh, using a uh, TV station, I think it is good and the easier and the best way of communicating about uh, preventing issues of violent extremism to our people. Yeah, indeed, you're right, Mr. Fujo. And uh, it was a good festival. I can attest to that uh, because I was there. So saw how, how our young people use art, drama, dances to communicate poems. It is just a... It was such a nice event and we hope for more because uh, it was only in um, it was only a very small scope of uh, people who were there, the youth. But uh, probably maybe you can organize something more, something bigger, which will also attract uh, other donors, other stakeholders to come on board. Okay, now, uh, uh, one thing I, I would like to know, or probably that has crossed my mind, is as, uh, as Haki Africa, on its own as Haki Africa. Do you, do, do you believe that uh, using art will be able to reach more people? Do you believe that uh, using our culture can it be able to, because we have a lot of cultural events, we have a lot of cultural events, do you think or do you believe that as Haki Africa you can use or partner up with the uh, community in terms of cultural events to be able to do the same? Yes, I think that's the best practice um, many people are using because, uh, you know, we are rely on our cultures. And uh, with the modern life, I think issues of art dominates a lot. I think these two, um, uh, two aspects are very original to, to people nowadays. I, and I believe through our culture, uh, we can mobilize many people as used to. Because um, with, uh, with us as an organization, our outreaches were to call for people in a, in a social law, to call them in a big staff, five hotels, to talk about these issues. But uh, to go into the roots or to go to the grassroots level, I think we, it will be a good idea if we we'll use our culture. And uh, you know, cultures are meant for people. And uh, people do practice, each uh, tribe, practice its own culture. And I think through it, it will give us a, a, a leeway, a free time to discuss these issues. And um, issue of art, uh, people like art, like everyday people watch TVs, like people are so on social media, like everyday people are listening to songs, are listening to it. Nowadays, is, it has gone to extend not even song. Uh, people are following life of other people through social media. 
like uh, I can hear young people discussing about Alibaba and uh, Diamond, and discussing about Bete, and discussing about uh, Raya TV, the music that they are, uh, they are showcasing. So these are, are the issues that uh, people are doing on a day-to-day -day life. So these are the avenues that um, as organization we are looking into so that uh, to get a, a bigger crowd uh, whenever we have issue, we want to pass information, especially on issues of crime. Because um, uh, recently we have seen uh, the entertainment industries, they do focus on issues of uh, local, normal life, issues of love. But uh, we want to, to urge to those uh, producers to, to look into issues of uh, 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 security, as per se, so that uh, to assist in uh, prevailing issues of, of peace and security in our local areas. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, as Haki Africa, all the organizations, uh, maybe other organizations that deal with the, the extremism, what, what do you normally do when probably you get to know that this particular young person has been is in a terror group and maybe they, they, they want to get out? What happens? What kind of security do they get? Or what, how do they go about it? Probably the family has convinced the person to get out of the terror group. Maybe they are not very much into it, but they want to get out. How, how well do you protect? Because you say this is a very big organization. How well do you protect the, uh, the particular to young Africa can say that uh, maybe uh, my children or my boy here yeah. Is, uh, he has been associating with terror groups. It's very hard. But um, uh, to us, we identify them as uh, the vulnerable young people. And um, whenever they come to us, because most of them, they come to us not with their families, but they come to us with their own initiatives. So whenever they come to us, we present them to police, uh, to government authorities, and um, we we are asking or we are requesting the government authorities to look into their issues. Because uh, we believe there is data say of Swahili that Muyu wa Muema, a bad can come be, uh, can come an, a good guy. So we believe that uh, uh, even if that uh, kind of a person is bad, but uh, if he will be reintegrated with the society, uh, we believe he can be a good person. So that's actually what we do. And uh, before uh, taking that uh, specific person to the uh, security uh, authorities, we do we tell him about uh, the law because uh, they have to understand the law. Uh, whenever you violate the law, uh, there is a punishment that you are going to get it. So that's very clear. So with us, we are making it clear to them so that they understand anything happen in the hands of the security actors. It's for his own benefit other than uh, letting yourself not presenting to yourself to the police and later you 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 being executed so they take that self initiative and uh, most of them they agree we take them and um, under the 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 code i know there is a, i don't know but uh, i perceive that um, uh, issues of amnesty are there so I don't know, but uh, most of them, most of them, we see they are taking to the court, and uh, some of their cases are being quitted. We don't know under which circumstances, but uh, that's what happened. But to us, I think the rule of law is equally important. If you have killed a person and uh, you have agreed to commit that uh, you, you did so, then let the rule of law take its way. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, now, like uh, the particular youth, because uh, it, you, you say that they're, they're, they're mostly they, they're, they use the religion and probably brainwash the particular uh, youth. So now, how, how do you, other than taking the, pol the, the kid to the police, because a lot has been put into the mind of the, the child, maybe was taken at the age of 10 years, and now at the age of 20, they want to rehabilitate. So what exactly, what process do you use to make sure that this young person goes back to a normal person and can be able to, to be able to mingle with other people in the community? Yes, uh, we, in Kenya, we 
have a, a docket uh, that deals with issues of uh, terrorism and um, they have their programs. There's a that's national strategy uh, for preventing and countering violent extremism. So in that uh, national strategy, uh, which is under uh, crime and prevention uh, Kenya uh, unit, I think they have sort of programs of reintegration. And uh, they do uh, do uh, psycho psychological uh, support, and um, there is a section of reintegration. So, with us as an organization, we don't have that full mandate of doing so. But um, whenever uh, somebody has returned, maybe from a terror uh, group, uh, then we are referring that person to that unit. So that uh, you know, it's the it's a government arm, it's a government department that's look into those issues. So they are in the best position to do whatever they want to do with that young person. But uh, I heard sometimes back the integration department. It has even uh, some local resources to give the 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 per se people who maybe they came back from a terror group so that to start with their lives. So this is the sum of the good uh, things that the uh, government has uh, have initiated. Although it's very rare for a person who may be reformed to come to the public and say that I was this kind of a person and I want to change because uh, he knows that the consequences are still there. So it's very rare for, uh, for it to happen. Thank you very much. And our viewers, as you've heard Mr. Fujo telling us more about uh, these terror groups, how the young kids are being taken and how we can also take them out. Probably maybe in the family you have uh, a young person. And uh, again, let me ask, how, how do you identify, like in a family, how do you identify that this person has changed? Because probably the young boy up to the age of 15 has been a good boy and then uh, all of a sudden, how, how do they, or how do you say that this guy has changed? Issues of reforming, it's upon uh, the person in, her or himself. So most of the time, what's happened is that, um, you know, there is this deterrence in, inside of that somebody. Maybe he has joined a terror group, maybe he has been practicing uh, criminal activities, for sometimes, but uh, is an a warning alert. Maybe is wanted by police. Maybe is wanted by authorities. Maybe is wanted even with his own people there. So I think this, and uh, even us as an organization, uh, by by informing them or empowering them, I think the the willing of uh, reforming is upon themselves. And um, if a person has decided to reform. I think we get a clue from their own, first of all, a second from their families. But uh, it's very hard for these people, as I said earlier, it's very hard, it's very rare for them to speak it publicly that uh, I am I'm a reform uh, terror uh, person. It's very hard. But um, for those who are vulnerable, there are those who attempt to join these terror groups. And uh, by then they got empowered. So they just uh, come uh, openly and discuss this issue to us. And there are those old people, they know that uh, our neighbor or my neighbor is into these issues of crime and violent extremism. Uh, they take the initiative uh, to come to us and asking us on what to do about them so that uh, they prevent that person or they counter the issues that that person uh, does to the community. And uh, by doing so as an organization, we have a clear strategy on how to deal with such people. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and now as Haki Africa, probably there's, there's more you'd like to do uh, other than just uh, uh, initiating people in, uh, I mean, uh, trying to get the youth out of terror and also uh, probably maybe want some more resources or what, how, how would you like to, what direction would 
Haki Africa want to go? Yeah, I think as an organization, we have a huge task ahead of us because uh, issues of crime, uh, they are worldwide and they are things that uh, happen on a daily basis. And um, we have a little resources uh, which we cannot reach everyone. But uh, we urge, and uh, we urge to, to well wish us. Because, uh, you know, uh, to be in a human right is not a normal job. This is a call. Uh, to intervene somebody's uh, rights when they are violated is not something that uh, you are doing and nobody is going to pay you. So we are urging to the well wishers if you, they have resources. I think we have a lot to do. And uh, we want to work with other partners whom they have little resources to. So I think if they will consider and give us uh, the resources, we will be able to reach masses and we will be able uh, to prevent and counter violent extremism in the Horn of Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ali Fujo. Our viewers, as we've heard, uh, Haki Africa is doing their best, and not only have, have, have and not only Haki Africa, but we have other organizations working hand in hand together with them. And uh, we've also heard that our youth are very vulnerable at the moment because uh, poverty has actually taken a toll on uh, most of the communities and most of the young people, and even some of the family members when they even see that their kids. Uh, are getting into terror and they know that they'll get something they actually let them be but I would urge each and every family to take care of their young ones because uh, out there the terror gang use mostly the young people and uh, as young as even uh, nine or even younger to be in those groups so thank you very much for watching the show and uh, Mr. Ali Fujo do you have something to tell our viewers as a parting shot despite uh, the hardship of issues that are uh, happening with our leaders, but we have to love our country. So peace comes number one, that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for watching the show and till next time, bye-bye. Atec Health International Development Organization, IDO Network. Makina, Amina, Nara.